The case of Kaler versus Kansas is about whether a state can abolish the insanity defense. The defendant in this case admits that he intentionally killed his family members. He wants to argue that he should be not criminally responsible for his crimes because he didn't know what he was doing due to mental illness. For many years, like most states, Kansas had the traditional insanity defense that included the McNaughton rule, which allowed defendants to claim that they didn't know the difference between right and wrong. It was a state legislature that abolished the insanity defense and instead adopted the mens rea approach. The McNaughton Rule explicitly recognizes that not knowing right from wrong due to mental illness is part of the insanity defense. In the mens rea approach, not knowing right from wrong makes no difference whether it's due to mental illness or for any other reason. The defendant's arguments in this case are that two constitutional provisions are violated when Kansas does not allow him to make the insanity defense as he frames it. The first constitutional provision he states is violated is the due process clause. He claims that he has a fundamental due process right to argue that he suffers from a mental illness that does not allow him to know the difference between right and wrong. His second argument is that it is cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth Amendment to punish him for a crime that he's not morally culpable for because he didn't know the difference between right and wrong due to his mental illness. The state of Kansas argues that the defendant in this case does not have a 14th Amendment due process right to argue the insanity defense that he wants on his own terms. While the state of Kansas agrees that the insanity defense has long been a part of our legal tradition and history, it points out that the insanity defense has varied significantly. Sometimes the insanity defense has focused on mens rea, at other times it's focused on not knowing the difference between right and wrong. A fundamental right, however, has to be long-standing and coherent, which is not true in this case according to the state of Kansas. The state of Kansas also argues that there's no Eighth Amendment violation in this case because the insanity defense is an affirmative defense. It is not punishment. This case has significant federalism implications. Criminal law and punishment is absolutely the traditional providence of state government. States can define their insanity defense as they like. They can take a mens rea approach, the approach like the McNaughton rule, or take a different approach. Most people agree that in some instances, a person shouldn't be criminally culpable due to mental illness. But the question is where to draw the line on who should be culpable due to mental illness and who shouldn't, and then who should draw the line the Supreme Court or the states.